Shalom. This is Yeshaya Yisrael, giving honor and praise unto Yah, the Creator and the Maker of heaven and earth. We're going to go over Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, and it reads as follows. From the Hebrew, where his sheep ka Yah, Mizraim, ba Aniyot, ba Derek Asher, Amoratilaka, Lo Tosif Od, Lir Ota, where he markar tem sham lo oyebeka, la abadim wa lich fa kot wa ain quone. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out is from the Hebrew understanding of this. Where his sheep ka, these are three different words in one word. And the English is three different words. Where and he sheep, which means to cause to return or to send back. In Hebrew, there are seven verb stems. All right, now the Hebrew word shab is in the vert, the first verb stem, which is the qual or the kal stem. All right, now he sheb is the causative stem, which is the fifth stem in Hebrew of the seven stems. All right, so you got the qual, the nif al, the pl, the pu al, the hif il, the hof al, and the hipa el. Those are the seven verb stems in Hebrew. So now you got the qual, which is considered the active. Then you got the nif al, which is the passive. Then you got the hif il being in the fifth one, being a causative. So now in this case here, when we read where has she ka, the ka at the end of that word simply means you. Where has she ka, right? One is going to cause you to return or one is going to cause you to go back. Now, let's go, if we will, brothers and sisters. To the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 39. We are in 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 39. And it reads as follows. When David heard that Nabal had died, he said, Blessed is Hashem who has taken up the cause of my disgrace from the hand of Nabal. And has prevented his servant from wrongdoing. And the Mosai has returned Nabal's evil upon his own head. Then David sent messengers and spoke regarding Abigail to take her to take her to himself as wife. Now, one of the things to point out in verse 39 it says this. Why Yishma Dawid, ki mate Nabal, why your male Baruch Yodhewahe, Ashil Rab et Reb. Kirapati, Miyad Nabal, Weet Abdo, Kashak, Mira et Reat Nabal, He sheep Yodhe Wahe, Borosho, Wa Yishlak Dawid, Wa Da Bir, Ba Abigail, Lo Kwakta, Lo Le Isha. Now, the key word I wanted to point out there is when it says the Hebrew word He sheep, as you seen there in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 39. When it says return, that's what that's talking about right there. And the most I cause to return upon his own head. Well, the Hebrew word used for return or to cause to go back right there is the Hebrew word Heshib. Now, that's the same root word that you're reading in Hebrew in Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. All right. Where Heshib ka, one is going to cause you to go back or one is going to cause you to return. The one that we're speaking of right here is yod heh the most high. Where his sheep kaya, the most high, he will cause you to return. The most high, he will cause you to go back. Mizraim, ba'aniyot. Now, another key word there is the word Mizraim. Now, in Deuteronomy 28, verse 53. Now, in the English of that, we see this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 53. And it says there in the English. You shall eat the flesh of thine own womb the flesh of your sons and of your daughters which the most high your king have given you in the siege and distress wherein your enemies will distress you now in verse 53 in the hebrew we see the following wa akata pari bitnaka basar baneka ubnoteka ashel natan lakaya eloheka bemazor Ub mazok, I shall yat zik laka oibeka. If you were listening carefully, you see the Hebrew word mazor, 
The word mazor in the Hebrew means distress. All right. Or siege. So let that be understood. The root of the word mazraim is the Hebrew word mazor in the Israelite Hebrew understanding. Because many times they will say, okay, it says going back into Egypt. So they're saying it's talking about the literal Egypt. But in actuality, it is not. So let that be known and understood. The word for Egypt that the Israelites had for it is not the same word the Egyptians had for their own place called Egypt. Egypt actually is a Greek word from Egyptos, which means um, whatever it means in Greek. But the ancient Egyptians themselves, or the people who were called the Egyptians, they called their own land the land of Simatawi, or the land of Tomeri, or the land of Tamehu, or so forth and so on. So, or some people refer to it as the land of Kemet. But those people there, they had their own particular name for that land. Now in the Israelite mind, knowing that they were brought out of captivity from that particular land, they called it the land of Mizraim. That's the Hebrew way of speaking about those people that were called the Egyptians. So that has to be known and understood. This is why in the scriptures, it says that all thy getting, get understanding. It's not everything is not just one tunnel way of thinking. All right. So getting back into this, it says, Now I want to go over this word Mizraim from other aspects in the scriptures as well. If you go, brothers and sisters, um, let's go to the book of Psalms. 118 verse 5 so where we can gain some understanding from the hebrew way we are in psalms 118 fifth verse we will read the english first then the hebrew okay and it says the following tehillim or psalms 118 in the fifth verse english says from the straits that i call upon god a god answer me with a great enlargement now in the Hebrew, we read this in the same verse. Min hamatzea korati ya anani bamer kab ya. So what's being stated right there emphatically is saying what? Min hamatzer, which means mean means from. From the straits, matzer, the same root word which means straits or distress. Meaning from my straits or from my distress. That's what it's talking about right there. So we can see it's actually the same word that's used within the Hebrew root word there. All right. So let it be known from the Israelite understanding from the Hebrew. Okay. Now getting back into this here. The word matzer now comes from the root word zar, which means trouble or distress. Now, I want to go, if we will, into 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 7. We are in the scripture, 2 Samuel chapter 22. Verse 7, and it reads as follows. In the English first, then we'll go into the Hebrew, and it says this. 22, verse 7 says this. In my distress, I will call upon the name of the Most High, and to my God I will call. From his abode he heard my voice, and my cry was in his ears. So what's being stated in verse 7, it says this. But Zar Li Ekra Yodhe Wahe, Wa El Elohai Ekra, Wa Yishma Bahe Kalo Kuo Li, Wa Shao Ati Baaz Nayo. So, those who are familiar with Hebrew, you know good and well, it says, But Zar Li. But Zar Bar means, ba means in or in the, and Zar means trouble or distress, as we also see in my distress or in my trouble. In that particular case, using the same root word Zar for that. So it's not should not be too hard to know and understand exactly what we're talking about. Zor becomes Matzer, Matzer becomes Matzor, Matzor becomes Matzrayim. Now, anytime in Hebrew, when you have the Ayim, as we went over this in another video, is concerning a double, a double whatever. Girabayim means socks because you only wear two socks. Raglayim means legs because you only have two legs. Aznayim means two ears. Or ears because you only have two ears. Now, when you deal with other things such as shulkanayim, that means two years. When you deal with the word makane, means camp. But makanayim means two camps. 
So when you're dealing with the double of something, when it's pluralized in Hebrew, it is always said as the Ayim, Ephraim, the son of Joseph, means doubly fruitful. So let that be understood. All right. Now, getting back into this portion right here. In verse 68, we see where has sheep kaya mitzrayim, the most high, he will cause you to go back in the distress of doubled by aniyot in ships. Now, the Hebrew word ba, as stated from before, means in or in the. And the word aniyot literally means, as stated, ships. So, how were they going to go back into the distress? Of the sea or in the distress of a captivity was going to be in ships. How are they going to go back into being in trouble doubled fold? That is going to be done in ships. So we have to know and understand what the term Egypt meant into the minds and the understanding of the house of Israel. If we go into the scriptures, brothers and sisters, let's go, if we will, to the book of Exodus chapter 20. We're going to start in verse 1. So that way we can gain some understanding. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Isaiah style in the scriptures. Those Israelites know what I'm talking about. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the most high thy king, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now let's go, if you will, to the book of 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 41. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 41. And it reads as follows. This is about the prayer that Solomon had offered. 1 Kings 8, 41. And it reads as follows. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people, Israel, but cometh out of from a far country for thy name's sake. Let's go into verse 51. For they, speaking of Israel, for they be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron. So let that be understood. What is being said there? It is said from the land of Egypt, meaning from the hot furnace of iron. So that's how Solomon, years after the Exodus, described Mitzrayim when speaking to the Most High. So now, if it wasn't inside the mind of the house of Israel or the Israelites, for Mizraim to be understood as Beit Abadim, that is to say the house of bondage, or so forth and so on. Why would Solomon, who before he even lost his mind, you may say, when he was still sane, before he started dealing with the idols, he, when speaking to the Most High, referred to Mizraim as the furnace of iron. Furnace is something that is hot. It was going to be a troubled thing for Mizraim concerning the children of Israel. So let that be known and understood inside the mind of the Israelite. Now let's go for more references concerning this. Let's go if we will. If we go into Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 15. That it says line upon line, precept upon precept. Because you have many unfortunately who try to sit there and state. Oh no it says Egypt again by way of ship. So it is simply talking about them only going into that northern place in northern Africa and way of ships by Titus and by the Ptolemies before that. But that's not what that's talking about, brothers and sisters. And um, we can sit there and let that be known and understood as we get into part two and later on in part three about this presentation. We're going to go back here, Deuteronomy chapter five, verse 15. So that way we can understand the scriptural Hebrew Israelite understanding from the scriptures, not speaking upon our own words and understanding what Egypt or Mizraim meant to the people. Deuteronomy 5.15 says the following. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Most High thy king brought thee out from thence through a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore the Most High commanded thee to keep the Shabbat day. So what it's talking about right there, once again, it is describing Egypt as the place where the Most High brought thee out from thence with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. That's where you was a servant at. So let that be known and understood. So getting into another portion concerning this particular subject. If we go to Deuteronomy 26, Deuteronomy the 26th chapter, verse 8. Now it's important to understand why a brother is going over this in Deuteronomy because it's in the same book that Deuteronomy 28 is mentioned. Deuteronomy 28, verse 6 says, 
And the Most High brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. So let that be known and understood what that is talking about. Shalom.